Welcome, this is Jani Saramad with the daily roundup of news from the US and around the world. First, the headlines. At least 50 people are dead in Nigeria mosque bombing during early morning prayers, said the police. Chinese tech giant Tencent surpasses Facebook in value. An opposition bid to restrict disqualified persons from holding party offices, foiled by the government. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina yesterday announced that the 1971 war veterans of different forces would get allowances from January's next year. And more eateries in India now don't add service charges, says a minister. And young woman from Brooklyn is among the U.S. Rhodes Scholars. World War II machine guns among weapons handed to police in London. And now the details. At least 50 people are dead in Nigeria mosque bombing during early morning prayers, says the police. At least 50 people were killed on Tuesday when a suicide bomber blew himself up at a mosque in northeast Nigeria, police said, in an attack blamed on Boko Haram militants. The attack happened during early morning prayers at the Medina Mosque in the Unagwarshana area of Mobi, some 200 kilometers by road from the Adamwa state capital, Yolo. So far, we have at least 50 dead from an attack at a mosque in Mobi, Adamwa state police spokesperson Abu Bakr told AFP. Several people were injured. We don't have the figure now because they have been taken to several hospitals for treatment, he said. It was a suicide bomber who mingled with worshippers. He entered the mosque along with other worshippers for the morning prayers. It was when the prayers were on that he set his explosives. Asked who was responsible, Abu Bakr said, we all know the trend. We don't suspect anyone specially, but we know these who is behind such kinds of attacks. They gave lower death toll, but both said that the number of those killed was likely to rise. Another emergency service official described the blast as devastating. He said only that there were high casualties. And Chinese tech giant Tencent surpasses Facebook in value. Chinese social media and video game giant Tencent became more valuable than Facebook on Tuesday as investors sent the company soaring into the top five of the world's biggest firms. Tencent's Hong Kong listed shares have doubled in value this year and on Monday it became the first Asian company with a market capitalization of half a trillion dollars. By the end of the trading day on Tuesday, Tencent's outstanding shares were worth a combined 523 billion US dollars, surpassing Facebook 519 billion US dollars. Despite its stratospheric climb, Tencent is still somewhere behind the world's most valuable company. Apple, which is currently valued at 873 billion US dollars. And Zimbabwe's MPs begin impeachment process against Define Mugabe. Zimbabwe's parliament has begun impeachment proceedings against President Mugabe, the first time in country's 37 year history that it has attempted such a move. A joint sitting of the Senate and National Assembly began after parliament opened a season earlier Tuesday to lay out the procedure. The ruling party, the ZANU PF, said it planned to move a motion to formally expel Mugabe, who has been clinging on the presidency despite a military takeover last week. ZANU PF, which Mugabe co founded and led for decades, ousted the 93 year old leader as his party chief on Sunday and gave him an ultimatum to step down in 24 hours or face impeachment. The former Vice President Emerson Mangawa has joined those calling for Mugabe to step down in his first comments since the president fired him on November 6, triggering the political firestorm. And war veterans to get allowances. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina yesterday announced that the 1971 war veterans of different forces would get allowances from January next year. We have decided to provide allowances from January 2018 to those who fought for the country's independence from different forces. She was addressing a reception arranged by marking the Armed Forces Day 2017. Prime Minister recorded the reception to gallantly award recipient freedom fighters and their heirs at the Army Multipurpose Hall at Dhaka Cantonment. Hasina said the members of the forces who had joined the Liberation War were not given allowances as they were in service at the time. All of them have gone into retirement by the time and their families are now in serious miseries. We 
will start providing allowances to them from January next, inshallah. She mentioned that the demand is raised every year when she meets everybody on the Armed Forces Day. So we've decided to give it, she said. And more increase in India now is on ad service charges, says the minister. According to an online poll of consumers, about 24% of the restaurants were not including service charges in the food bills in November in comparison to only 19% three months back. The survey conducted by an online platform Local Circles showed about 21% decline in the percentage of its respondents saying that the restaurants were including service charges in the bill. While in August, 53% of the respondents had admitted of paying the charge. This month, it was only 32%. The survey also showed that one in every 10 consumers surveyed had got the service charge removed after taking it up with the restaurant. Overall, 35% of consumers said they did not pay any service charge in last month when they visited restaurants. Nothing works better than the pressure of consumers. Lead on impose Inspector Raj. Eateries should understand it and follow the best practices. Consumer Affairs Minister told the Times of India. And a young woman from Brooklyn was among the U.S. Rhodes Scholars. A young woman from Brooklyn is among the latest group of U.S. Rhodes Scholars. Kumara V. Jean, 21, completed her senior thesis at Hunter College of the City University of New York on Black Lives Matter movement. Jean is a child of Haitian immigrants and she credits her high school teachers for helping her identify political science as a major. She added a double major in media analysis and a course called Perspectives on Peace served as the inspiration for her desire to earn a PhD. The scholarships are worth about 68,000 US dollars per year, according to the Rhodes Trust. The first class of American Rhodes scholars entered Oxford in 1904. And World War II machine guns are among the weapons handed to police in London. Two World War II machine guns have been handed to police in Westminster during the opening week of a national gun surrender. The initiative, which began on 13th November, has seen 143 guns given in to police across London. The World War II weapons, which had been deactivated, are among five automatic guns to have been handed in. A further 3,859 rounds of ammunition have also been relinquished as part of the campaign, which runs until Sunday. Other weapons to be handed to police include 31 shotguns, 11 pistols, 10 handguns, 9 revolvers, and 6 rifles. Police said people who surrendered firearms would not automatically be charged, but could be if weapons were later connected to a crime. Department Superintendent Mike Balcom of the Metropolitan Trident and Area Crime Command said every firearm handed into police makes the city safer as it prevents them from falling into the hands of the criminals. I would urge anyone else who is in possession of an illegal firearm to visit their local 24 hour police station during the final days of the gun surrender. And thank you very much for watching. Watch us at www.millenniumtv.org and drop us a line at info at millenniumtv.net. This is Johnny Sarayman from signing off from Millennium TV USA. We are bridging communities worldwide.